And this is the Mercedes-Benz Rangers postgame show on a night where Jonathan Quick kicked up his leg in a moment of brilliance. The Florida Panthers kicked up their heels in 60 minutes of high-octane offense, and they skate away with the 4-3 win on home ice. Welcome inside our Delta MSG studios. Alongside Steve Valiquette, I'm John Giannone. We sat there and watched this game, and you said this could be 7-6. Yeah. This could be 8-7. It ends 4-3. Do you feel like the Rangers maybe deserve something more from that game or got what they deserve? Got what they deserve. That's not a good hockey game. That was a holiday hockey game. Hmm. That was more like men's league than NHL or all-star game because these guys are in the NHL. You know what I thought about this game? Everybody out here thinks they're a 30-goal scorer. Hmm. Nobody played their roles. Look, no offense to Brzezinski, VZ, those guys, but if they're getting breakaways every shift, it's not the kind of hockey game you want to be in because you want to be in a game where your role players play their roles. Let the top guys sort it out, but there's no way you should be in a hockey game in the NHL against a top team like that defensively in Florida, and you're, we're going to see 12, 15 great A's. That's, that's not the type of hockey you want to play. Um, so I don't like that game. You know? Yeah, Rangers lose for only the ninth time in regulation in 34 games this year. It was a game they trailed 2-0, came back and tied it at 2. Florida took a 3-2 lead into the third period. And in the later stages of the third, the Rangers summoned a shorthanded goal to tie it. But that feel-good era lasted a minute 22 before Florida won it. Look, that one brought me right up to my feet, right, John? I mean, I was like, oh, my God, this team just never dies. You know, you can't kill this team. And... It was a great comeback feeling. It didn't last long. It was a minute and 22 seconds later, and Florida answers. But you still like the pushback from this group. They're able to go there. They're gutsy. They find a way. And this is a hockey game. Believe me, the players don't want to play either. It was too wide open. But in a hockey game that's wide open, they kept it going in the third period, and they find a way. So you're back in it, and you feel great about it. And it's one of your top guys. It's two of your top guys. So you're feeling good about yourself, and for whatever reason, they just still wanted to go for it when I'm thinking it's probably better just to hang back at this point and defend because you haven't really done it all night. Florida keeps pushing and they just keep their put, foot on the pedal and it's just net front again. And it's a swing play for Verhage where he gets around, he just gets it over the pad here. But look, this was the hockey game, John. Jonathan Quick played a great hockey game. Uh, don't hang this loss on Jonathan Quick at all, but this is a team loss. And I'm telling you right now, the coaches hate games like this because it's not an identity game that you're going to win in the playoffs with. All right, true. And what did the Florida Panthers do tonight that made life so difficult for the Well, Rangers? here's my scouting report on them. Top five in defending East-West, mm -hmm. broken plays, rebounds. What kind of a joke was this? <laughs> like, it was nothing, wide open. Yeah, play, it was right? wide yeah, open. Yeah. What was that? It was, that was, it happens sometimes in the NHL where the egos of the players especially coming off the holiday. They just want to go back and forth, and I think the ego took over in this game. Mm -hmm. All right, you talked about yeah. Jonathan Quick and his ability to do what he did in tonight's game. This is his second straight loss in regulation time after he hadn't had one the entire year, but he's able to keep his team in the game where he made seven or eight saves that deserve to be on a highlight reel, but there's one that will be talked about long after tonight is over, and that's the first period okay. Scorpion. Right, So, but we have to talk about this. A Scorpion is two feet. This is one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to call this the reverse Scorpion. I, I, you have to have a name for these things. It's that cool of a save. You're not going to see this every night. It's once every few years. Paddle down because the, the player is going into the blue ice. That's the play right there. He loses his head a little bit, so he's off balance, but he still sees out of the corner of his eye. And this is desperation. But I love this save, John. Like this, this makes me happy. This is where I get excited about goaltending because he's such a competitor. There's a deep will to his game. He's always, he's always got one more save. He's stealing saves here from guys all year long. And Gotta love the way he's playing. You ever try a save like that? Did you ever make a save like that in your entire life? No, I mean, I would no. imagine with the... I was never out of position. With the leg length you're bringing <laughs> to a scorpion, you probably covered no, three quarters of the net. I mean, what is the mentality of a goaltender when they're doing Is it just sheer no, I'm throwing it, or do they actually expect to make a save? No, I, I would say, well, he, he yes. Mm -hmm. But I will say that one thing that really upsets me with the current state of goaltending globally is that everybody wants to be perfect, and if they can't be perfect, they're not willing to come out of that to make a save like that. To, you're already there, but sometimes goalies would rather look good getting scored on mm -hmm. than look bad trying to come out of it and do something like that. Yeah. And his throwback 
I'm going to clip that this, this summer. I'll show that to every goalie I work with, goalie schools. I want them to compete there. Yeah. You know, that's where, you know, in practice, when the guys slam their sticks, you go to practice mm -hmm. a lot. It's, it's those saves yeah. where you steal one from a guy and it gets everybody in your team excited. Yeah, it's funny. When we interviewed Tyler Pitlick at the end of the first period, he said he wasn't even sure that's what happened. He went to the tablet on the bench to make sure that he saw what he thought he actually saw. And it saves like that when we have Henrik sitting here that he always talks about what he loves so much about Jonathan Quick. And it's that ability to never quit on a puck. But in the end, still not enough. 4-3 the final Florida Panthers over Jonathan and quick in the Rangers. Let's hear from the captain, Jacob Truba, after this one goal loss. It looks like another, you know, you, both teams, top teams in the East, and both teams, goaltenders making saves. A lot of good things on both teams, it looked like. Uh, yeah, like I said, it's pretty, yeah. just a, a good hockey game. I think, uh, I mean, we had a lot of good, good chances. Uh, like you said, both goalies played, uh, played really well. Um, just a couple, couple mistakes that, uh, that cost us, I and mean, a broken stick in front that, uh, nothing you can really do about that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I thought uh, the execution, the effort, uh, the energy, the, the speed I thought was, was there tonight. And uh, honestly, we, we play that game the majority of the time. We'll like the result. Yeah, you get right back on the horse tomorrow night. Uh, we're right back at it tomorrow. I think, uh, yeah, just keep, keep bringing our game that, uh, that we brought tonight with the, the physicality, the speed. I think, uh, like I said, the effort was there and just didn't get the, didn't get the result we wanted. Great. Dave Maloney working the dressing room down in Florida, so I put it to you. You heard what Jacob Truba said. Yeah. You play that game the majority of the time. We're going to like what the result is. Tonight wasn't one of those nights. You I don't disagree agree? with the captain on that one. That's a loss. Because You're losing 8 out of 10 if you play like that. You can't play like that. But didn't Florida play like that too and won? Florida played like that two years ago when they won the President's Trophy. The Rangers could play like this in the regular season. Since the salary cap era, 19 teams um, it's been 19 years, rather, and only two teams that have won the President's Trophy yeah. have won the Stanley Cup. Mm -hmm. So you can play like that. Florida played like this three years ago, lost second round. Boston played a lot like that last year, lost first round. Rangers could play like that, but they won't go deep like that. Mm -hmm. Trust me. Do you, you disagree? You think you can play Again, the reason I fire say wagon hockey and I do go think deep? it was fire wagon hockey on both ends tonight, and Florida is in their dressing room talking about Yeah, but game. Florida doesn't play like that every night. Correct. They, they allow and neither the do second. the Rangers. Right. No, they don't. They don't. Right. Uh, they just both fell into this game, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes a hockey game just breaks out. I think, again, I think it's the ego of the player sometimes because yeah. they've got some good guys going up and down the ice, and Panarin and Zibanej are say, well, I want to take part in this too. It's fun yeah. hockey. Mm -hmm. It's not winning playoff hockey. Right. You know, mm -hmm. we've never seen a Stanley Cup winner win outscoring everybody through the playoffs 7-6, seven, 6-5. Six, yeah, six, not, not to that. Certainly not in about It's defense wins. 40 defense years, wins. For sure. All right, let's continue the reaction down in Florida. Dave Maloney with Chris Kreider. Pretty tightly contested event. Uh, your thoughts, Chris? Yeah. Um, kind of felt like a playoff game at times. Not a lot of time and space. Uh, well, both teams just kind of trying to get pucks and bodies to the net to create something. So... Uh, there's a couple of good hockey teams, and I think there's a couple of things. If you know, a couple of little details we we polish, we do a little better job of. Maybe we come come out on top. So. And those couple of things, where do you think that would be? Yeah, I mean, I give credit to their penalty kill, but mm -hmm. at the same time, we we had enough opportunities where we've got to adjust on the power play to the way they're killing. Um, and we talked about it, and we just uh, we didn't do it, we didn't execute. So. And just again, you have that, that uh, shorthanded situation. You see me come the other side and just lay it into the wheelhouse there. Yeah, it was an unbelievable net drive to open up the, yeah, open up the right passing right. lane. And um, just Mika's poise, knowing where to put that puck so I can just skate into it. Um, if anything, I probably telegraphed the pass a little bit, so Mika <laughs> really had to place it. But, and I fired it over pretty hard, too, so it was an unbelievable play. Um, yeah, I guess it kind of gets, gets lost in the shuffle when you lose that game. So. And you're back on the horse tomorrow night. Thankfully, yeah. Chris Kreider's thoughts after the loss. You heard him talk about the, the shorthanded goal that tied the game for the Rangers in the third. That was the Rangers' third shorthanded goal of the season. All right, so your thoughts on his reaction to how this night so went. So I thought his take was more on the offensive side of the puck, mm -hmm. which we said after the second period, the Rangers had created 11 great A's. This is against a team in Florida that only gives up six a game. So I love the offense, yes. However, uh, you can't, here's what the recipe is to me. It's seven great A's, seven to eight a game. Well, giving up less than seven yourself. Uh, you can't go 12 against 13. That's not gonna work. Um, the winning recipe really is seven great A's and 
12 or more uh, low danger chances for, and that's always going to find you into that wheelhouse because you're not warming up the other goalie while you're still having your grade A chances. What, you don't need, you just don't need 14. I can't wait to see what this report says tomorrow. Yeah. I think it's going to be like 14. Mm -hmm. I, I just thought it was more wide open than it should be. But the players do like that. Yeah. I, I want to hear the coaches, like the coaches <laughs> want to talk about yeah. that. I'm more of a coach now. I don't think that way. Yeah, I'm sure they don't love it. We're going to talk about that report that you'll have mm. tomorrow when the Rangers face the Tampa Bay Lightning. We have more to come on this edition of the Mercedes-Benz Rangers postgame show. More reaction, more insight as well. 4-3, the Rangers lose just their second loss in the last seven. We're coming back in a moment.